We're discussing hybrid and multi-cloud security strategy with Anand Oswald from Palo Alto Networks. Many, many years ago, when there was no public cloud, applications were predominantly on-premise in your data center. But now, as applications have started moving to the public clouds, AWS, and Azure, GCP, Oracle, Alibaba, and so on and so forth. When applications side in multiple public clouds, people call it multi-cloud architectures. And when you talk of hybrid cloud, it means that you have applications on-prem and in the public cloud. Most organizations have a hybrid and multi-cloud environment, which means that they have some applications on-premise in the data center, or what we call the private cloud, and applications sitting in multiple public clouds. Given this kind of adoption for hybrid and for multi-cloud environments, what are the security issues that arise? As these applications get distributed in your private data center, in the public cloud, in multiple public clouds, the most important thing is to have visibility into what applications are there, where they're running, etc. If I can see something, I can secure it. The second thing is, how do you manage all of this security infrastructure, these policies, these constructs consistently? How do you ensure that all the data residing uh, on-prem and the public cloud is secured consistently? How do you have the unified manageability views and having that run in a very simplistic manner? Those are some of the challenges that we come in security because with all of this distributed environment, the attack surface is increasing. Given the complexity of this kind of environment, how does that change the security posture and the general approach to security? In the past, applications were predominantly in your data center. You secured that by having a next generation firewall or network security appliance at the DMZ and did all your security inspection and maintained your posture. Now, as applications are in the data center, but also in multiple public clouds, we need to ensure that the data we access is secure, the applications are protected, but also you manage all of these consistently. Because now some of them are in the data center, some in AWS, Azure, GCP, et cetera. So you need to be able to manage all of this consistently. So you have a consistent security architecture across the entire enterprise. You have a single policy definition, a single manageability for the network and cloud security admin across all of these constructs. How is this different from security in a traditional data center? They've generally been secured by hardware-oriented stack, a next-generation firewall, multiple security services layered on the next-generation firewall, and potentially additional point products to do additional services. Now, as you look into the cloud, to protect the cloud networks, we've had software firewalls, virtual machine, a containerized firewall, or a cloud-native firewall in these public cloud environments. These are in different environments, but you still want to manage them consistently because it's one enterprise. The applications are just everywhere. You want to have a single view of policy. You want to have a single network security administrative view of when you set policies and rules across all of these constructs. Ensuring that you don't recreate these stacks or have disjointed stacks, a very complex operational architecture is very important. The architecture of security needs to address all the configurations, all the clouds that you're now addressing to have different public clouds, you have your private cloud or your data center, and now you want to make sure that your security policies, your security architecture is consistent. You have the same policy for the users accessing different applications sitting in different locations, different users. At the same time, you don't want to have more and more operational complexity. You want to have a simplified view for the NetSec or the CloudSec admin, all of these constructs. You're trying to drive a straightforward, simple view, despite the behind the scenes complexity of the fact that you're dealing with multiple cloud providers. There are two things. One is, of course, we want to have a simple view for the administrator to configure policies. But more important, we also want to have a consistent best in class security. If I'm accessing an application in the data center, I'm going through certain uh, security stack. I want that, of course, to be best in class, but I also want that to be consistent when I access applications sitting in the public cloud or different public clouds. So I want that consistency. I want that best in class behavior. And of course, I want the simplicity. And all of this should be done without compromising the end user experience. From a compliance, from a regulatory standpoint, does multi-cloud add additional complexity as well? It does. We have new and new regulations coming in our industry every so often. We have data residency requirements where customers would want data to be within their country. 
you have requirements for compliance. Healthcare industries have compliance requirements. Utilities and other industries have their own compliance requirements. Retail, financial, each industry has different compliance requirements. We want to ensure that we are making it easy for these industries and these customers to A, adopt these services and also make it easier for them to get compliance from the infrastructure. Anand, can you give us an example of a security incident relating to multi-cloud, hybrid cloud environments that could have been prevented? We had a large customer that came to us. They had multi-cloud environment and they also had a hybrid cloud environment. They had consolidated data centers and public cloud environments and had breaches in their public cloud environments because of command control connections from their instances in the public cloud to the outside world. Of course, they're protected now as they install software firewalls across multiple clouds, but a consistent policy to ensure that we can look at all of the threats, command control, software exploits, DNS exploits, URL filtering, threat prevention, sandboxing, and these are done consistently across the two public clouds that they had, but also consistently from the data center they had. So now they have a consistent policy across the entire infrastructure and they're protected. So the key is that consistency across all the different clouds as well as the data center. Yes, and also the best-in-class security capabilities. Threats are getting more and more evasive. Attackers are getting more and more sophisticated. So we want to have the best-in-class security capabilities powered by AI and machine learning, which is not database and signature-oriented approaches, but powered through AI ML. And these are now consistently applied across your hybrid multi-cloud environment. So again, the consistency is essential, but you also need the ongoing support of AI and ML to be current with the threats that are constantly evolving. Absolutely right. Given all of this, what are the basics of security strategy for hybrid and multi-cloud environments? It's a six-point strategy. First is around visibility which means that you need to have complete visibility into which applications reside where, which environments they are in, and what you need to protect them. You can only secure something if you can see it. Second, you need to ensure that now you have unified manageability and unified policy across the infrastructure. Third, you want to have the best in class security. The old approach of a database or a signature approach to solving security will not work. You want to have the newer approaches of using the power of AI and ML stop the attacks, day zero attacks. Stop them exactly when they happen because you don't want to give the attackers that window of opportunity from an attacker's detected to when it's patched. Fourth, help customers around all things around compliance and regulations. Make it easy for them to have consistent, best-in-class security. Next, make sure that all of this is done in a simplistic manner. Ease of use is important, visibility is important, ensuring that you're able to configure these things and manage these things consistently as things are dynamic and change happen. And last but not the least, bring the network security and the cloud security teams together, especially as you talk about the public cloud, to have unified goals around security. In a lot of companies, there are different organizations. In some companies, the same organization, but show the value of all the things that you do consistently for all of them. That's what I tell my customers, it's a six point plan. How do these six points fit into your product strategy? It comes down to the principles of zero trust. We're having a user trying to access an application. Before I allow that connection, I need to understand who the user is, what device are they on, what application are they trying to access, what data are they trying to access. If I decide to allow that connection, use the principles of least privilege access to allow that connection. Now, once that connection is allowed, you're not done. You're just getting started because now you need to inspect that connection on a continuous basis for threats on that session. The principle of zero trust, ensuring that you will have no notion of implied trust. Why is zero trust so foundationally important? Zero trust allows you access as a user to what application you need, what data you need consistently. Understanding who are you, what device you are on, what are you trying to access? What data do you want to access? Do you have the right permission sets? That allows you to inspect these connections on a continuous basis and do that across all facets. You can be at home, on the road, you can be on any network, you can be on any device. You have no notion of implied trust. You will always have the same level of consistent security no matter who the user is, what device they're on, what network they're on, what application and data they access, and that consistent policy. 
Anand, as you talk with your customers, to what extent has Zero Trust been adopted out in the market and how much room is there to grow, so to speak? Most organizations have three distinct security architectures. They have an hardware-oriented architecture, which I call with a next-generation firewall, services enable, additional appliances to secure their data center. As applications move to the cloud, they have software firewalls, virtual machines or containers firewalls or cloud-native firewalls. And to secure the remote workforce and the remote branches, they have a cloud-delivered stack, which we call SASE. We have over 1,700 customers today, Michael, that use all the three form factors and have started their journey of consistent security, of consistent policy, of consistent manageability from day zero to the end across their entire infrastructure. We are in the early innings of this one as more and more customers adopt a platform-centric approach and embark on that zero trust across the entire enterprise. What is the easiest and the fastest way for organizations to adopt zero trust? Zero Trust is a journey for many customers because many of the organizations have architectures that they've built over the number of years. So understanding where you are today, understanding the North Star or where you want to get to, and making steps along the way to simplify how you do manageability, how you do policy, to have that consistent security across all facets of your enforcement points, your data center, your public cloud, your remote workers, is the essential journey to start. And we have many tools to help our customers on that journey. You've spoken about the essential importance of AI and machine learning. You've spoken about the foundational importance of zero trust. How do these come together? If you think about the way customers are evolving, the days of a user in the office accessing an application that sits on-premise are gone. Users are now everywhere. We're in the office, we're at home, we're on the go. Applications, they're everywhere. They're in the data center, they're in the public cloud, they're in multiple clouds. We're no longer accessing those applications from only IT-issued devices. We have our own devices, my iPhone, my Android device, my iPad, and so on and so forth. I'm accessing these applications and data, not just from the corporate network, but from the home Wi-Fi network, from 4G, from 5G networks. So we have this whole any any phenomenon. This makes life complicated because now you have so many permutations and combinations. The only way to achieve enterprise-wide zero trust is to have a platform-centric approach, consistent security, consistent policy, consistent manageability. No matter what the user is, no matter where the application reside, no matter what form factor of network security I use. Where do AI and ML fit into this landscape? Let's take an example of uh, URL filtering, Michael. The traditional way of doing URL filtering has always been to have crawlers on the internet, to build a database of all the URLs, to group the URLs into certain categories, and then to give a risk code to each and every URL. And then you set a policy, 0 to 10 or low, medium, high, and you were able to get it done. This is no longer working. Attackers are getting more and more sophisticated. Before I build a database, the URL is gone. Or attackers will register domains today to use five years from now. The only way to solve it is through power of AI and ML, where I can look at metadata of the URL, content of the page, to stop those highly evasive threats in line in real time. That's just one example. We apply that across all our services through command control connections, software exploits, sandboxing, IoT security, DNS security, SaaS, and so on and so forth. That's how we're using AI and ML across all the infrastructure and security to stop threats that we have never seen before. We're able to stop over 8.5 billion threats every single day. And only 1.5 million of those are net new attacks. We're able to learn data across all our customers, what we call the network effect of data, to make sure that we are making every day more secure than the day before. What should network security professionals understand about the cloud and how cloud makes their job different? There are a lot of benefits that the organizations get with the adoption of public cloud. You get speed, agility, almost infinite compute when you want it at the closest location you have. But as you have a distributed architecture in some sense where you have multiple public clouds and also your private cloud, you want to ensure that you think about security from a day one. Having a consistent security architecture, having consistent policy and manageability is paramount for success. Are there differences that network security engineers need to understand when it comes to issues like policies in the cloud relative to what they're used to dealing with in the data center historically? 
there'll always be some differences in terms of how they set policies for the public cloud. But remember, we talked about having multiple public clouds. So as they are having multiple of these public clouds, how do you ensure that you set consistent policies that apply across these multiple public clouds so that you can consistently manage your, your user to app policies? And what advice do you have for security professionals when it comes to migrating their traditional security environment and architectures into this hybrid and multi-cloud world? The most important thing is to ensure that as you are migrating from your on-prem infrastructure to multiple public clouds, or you may already have multiple public clouds, ensuring that you think through your security architecture, to think through that you have all the consistency from a security perspective. Your policy definition is defined once and applied across all of the clouds and your private cloud. So that you can have a unified manageability, a simplified admin experience, and the best and optimal user experience. One of the issues that often comes up is the question of managed services versus a do-it-yourself approach when it comes to security. If you think of the public cloud, we support both the options. There are a lot of customers who have basically managed, of course, their on-prem firewalls in the data center. And they would like to manage their virtual firewalls, a VM or a continuous firewall themselves with consistent policy. There are also customers in many cases who want to have cloud-native firewall that is built into the consoles of the public cloud, built into AWS or Azure, so on and so forth. And that's what we call cloud and GFW. We support both variations depending on what the customer wants and where they are in their journey. Anand, one of the takeaways I'm getting from you is by having this consistent platform, you're enabling security professionals to focus on the fundamentals, the core of providing great security. If you think about network security admin's job, it's already hard. So if you have all of the operational aspects of what they do taken care of, automated, it's simplified. They can focus on what they do best in terms of what they have to do from a security perspective, ensuring that they're able to have the best security for their organization. This seems like a very fundamental point. At the end of the day, you want to have that consistent, best-in-class security across all of your hybrid multi cloud environments. You want to also have that simplicity we talked about, that operational simplicity, that ease of use, those all are important. But security is absolutely the most important. So the platform helps alleviate some of the mundane work so that the security folks can concentrate where they need to. It helps automate a bunch of the stuff that, that would have been done manually. It helps give them insights for monitoring and alerts and things that they want to do from templates into all things they can do on an ongoing basis, looking at all the threats that they're seeing and what they need to do to react to it. Again, the point is making life for security professionals and IT professionals easier so that they can focus on ensuring that their environment is fully secure. Yes. Anand, you work with so many different customers at Palo Alto Networks. You see so many different kinds of organizations, so many different kinds of security architectures and stages of maturity. Can you share advice on securing your multi-cloud environment and migrating successfully just in the fastest, easiest way? I think that's what everybody cares about. They care a lot about speed and agility, but more and more as you talk to security professionals in the organizations, they also want to make sure they're doing it thoughtfully, uh, consistently, and securely. Look, 92% of all organizations either have or are going to have a multi-cloud environment. Most of these organizations also have private cloud environments. They have consolidated data centers. They may have had many before, and they have a few right now. As you move many of these applications to the public cloud, Ensuring that from a north-south perspective, you secure all the traffic. Because network security at the broadest level is all about traffic inspection and applying right policies. Secure all the traffic north-south or east-west. When you're looking at hardware firewalls in a private data center, ensuring that the policy that you have for your applications in your data center, as you have applications moving to the cloud, those policy constructs are done consistently. The policies you apply are applicable across all the public cloud environments. Those things have to be thought through. Then you also want to have the right level of visibility, the right level of analytics, the right level of telemetry to understand exactly what's going on, to understand what's happening in the network, where do you see the threats, how you're protecting those threats, what policies you need to change, and how do I apply all of these changes consistently, easily. It can't be cumbersome. It can't take me weeks and months to make changes across this cloud. That's too slow in the cloud environment. These need to happen in near real time. Are there 
common or typical challenges or obstacles that you see as organizations make this transition? Usually the slowness comes when things are not done with the power of automation because manual configurations, setting up policies manually is always gonna take more time. So we help our customers to automate these journeys, to help them have a templatized approach to as policies so you can apply a policy once across your cloud. When you wanna change your policies, you can use the best practice assessments that we have based on our experience working with thousands and thousands of customers to ensure that you have the right policy architecture, the right framework across all of these hybrid multi cloud environments. Anand, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us about security in the hybrid and multi-cloud environment. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it.